if I'm, if I'm getting it right. My timeline may be off, but tell us a little bit more about that. I ended up getting these ulcers in my stomach and it caused me to have this thing called like leaky gut. And okay. um, I, every time I was like in like a really stressful situation in which that was really stressful for me when I found like all the evidence that I needed, my face would flare up. Yeah, the pictures, yeah, so I saw that yeah. my lashes would fall out. Even oh, wow. um, I thought it was, it would take me forever to recover from it. And then time where I caught him red-handed, you know, on the okay. phone um, and messaging, and he actually flew out to see this, this girl and I caught him. Uh-huh. And my uh-huh. face flared up like you would never I mean it, awful like yeah. he, that was like my thing every time I would get stressed out I mean he would touch my body and I would literally be in a fever yeah oh wow mm-hmm. it was really strange that's never happened to me before it's almost as if your body was rejecting his very his very presence yeah. in your life his, his very yeah. existence your body our bodies you know they have a tendency to let us know who really should be around us or not yeah they really can't do that. I ended up getting Bell's palsy um, in, the, oh, wow. in the left side of my face. It's, so it's still partially, very partial, paralyzed. Uh-huh. And it's right. not too noticeable unless you just actually like observed me, you know, for a while. But a little, right, a right. little paralyzed still. What was going on with your relationship while this was happening to your body? What kind of a, if you did, had to describe him in like two or three words, what kind of man was he? during this time when you were going through this? Unavailable. Wow. He's very unavailable. I went to so many doctor appointments. I had to go every week for a while, and then it went every month, and then it was every three months, right. and then every six months. And I was actually in a precancerous state. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, for, by the time you got sick like this, and you're dealing with this narc, this, this unavailable man, just curious to ask, how long was the time frame between when you saw the books at his mom's house and this happened? What was the time frame of that, would you say? A couple of years? A year, uh, six months, maybe? Uh, months. Think, really? Wow. Maybe six months. Quick. You got sick. You got sick quick. Mm-hmm. Dealing with him. He literally made you sick, girl. Yeah, he made me sick. <laughs> he, made you, he, made you, he made you sick. He yeah. made you sick. Maybe, oh, okay, so, maybe six months, but, maybe eight months. Yeah. 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 When did, when did it get to the point where uh, you started to recognize that this thing that he was doing behind the scenes with all the girls and everything that he was doing, uh, you weren't going to tolerate it anymore? When did you kind of get to that point? Um, I started I started treating him like he was a narcissist. Uh, when wow. Probably about... Uh, a little over a year into the relationship no over a year and a half into the relationship when I really was just set in stone like this man's a narcissist so then I started googling like uh, how to heal a narcissist how to help a narcissist Um, okay and I mean I would I would even say stuff like uh, I'm sorry but, but that's your reality I would say stuff like that. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm sorry that that's your reality. Wow, or, good for you. Um, I mean, I would, I could, I started reading him very well. So like, I knew when he was lying, yeah. and I would yeah. literally, good, good, I good. literally, good. it's almost like I flipped it on him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Innocent, like, gosh, really beginning of this year, the end towards the end of last year, and okay. um, I would say. I would be like, hey, babe, like, and I would hold both of his hands, like, look him in the eyes. I'm like, you don't have to lie to me. Like, you don't have to lie oh, to me. Oh, you're good, Yeah, girl. I was like, you don't have That's to good. lie That's good. Way to go. I was like, I love you. I was like, no. Way to go. Yeah, so I, I, I told him, I was like, I, I love you no matter what. No matter what you've done, or what you said. And I was like, the truth, honestly, is it will set you free. You just <laughs> tell me the truth. <laughs> and he would still lie. He would tell me the truth, and then he'll lie and deny that, and then gaslight me and say I was hearing things so that I never said that, and then he'll say that I was gaslighting him, and then he right. then he would say a narcissist, you're, that I was a narcissist, 
And yeah, I was like, like no, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. He's like, a narcissist. Like, yeah, he's like, a narcissist yeah. will yeah. never claim yeah. they're narcissists. You're the narcissist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because, but the bottom line is that you stuck to what's fundamentally true. The facts. Mm -hmm. He's lying. Yeah. And so many people get caught up in these these word salads and they're going all around. And, you know, Dr. Romney, all we and there's so many more. There's some that are a part of this particular page that I have. Uh, and, and, and there's there's so many other coaches and therapists and those that are that are truly helping other people. And they will be happy to explain to so many couples and other individuals, women or men, that don't get caught up in that circular conversation. Mm -hmm. Because the bottom line is they're not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. and, and as long as somebody can say, hey, you're lying, they're going to have a problem with that. And that's what you did. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things changed as you were you were doing this research. A lot of things were you were changing as it were. Mm -hmm. He was still being who he was, mm -hmm. right? Going out of town, telling you, wait, 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 wait telling you not to go to Atlanta. You got to tell that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was okay, Towards the end of our relationship. Controlling. Yeah, he's yeah. very, very, uh -huh. very, very controlling. We yeah. broke up in February, okay? Uh, of this year. Of this year. 2020. Yeah, okay. broke up in February yeah. is this year. But I yeah. was still under his control. We spoke day That's and crazy. night, all in between. Uh, we, like, reported to each other what we were doing, which I was being honest. I don't really know oh, if oh. he was being honest. But I mean, uh, everything seems to be going right now where he's leaving you alone and your son. By the way, Jenny does have a much gorgeous son. If you have not been to my page yet to see him, he's a, a gorgeous son. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's uh, no doubt going to turn out to be just as a, a strong achiever and a strong, determined person like you are. Oh, so that's a good you. thing. Thank you. Very kind. But but tell us, it's th this is not necessarily a road to recovery. I said that. I kind of got that from a conversation I had yesterday with Jennifer because she she said that, that she's on a road to recovery but yours is yours is what you called it and I told you I'm stealing it the bounce back and if I could make a if I could, yeah if I could make a shirt from it I would maybe somebody out there will do it mm -hmm. but you're doing a bounce back yes you're literally back. doing a bounce back and I love that mm -hmm. because that is what you are doing mm -hmm. and I think he recognizes that mm -hmm. how's the bounce back going so far oh man great let me tell you about it uh, yeah, please just tell me about it. I went up almost a hundred points in my credit score. I'm completely huh. debt free. Yeah. I'm sorry, you didn't tell me that. I totally forgot that everybody knows. Yeah. Can you? Okay. Please tell everybody why that is important right now because of what you are going through. Give them an idea. Okay, so I was Go. completely um, dependent on him. So dependent on him. I had no friends completely isolated and divided um yeah. i was not like he made me believe that he was giving me the life i've ever wanted because um before wow. i was in school and i worked and i was a single mom so now he took away That's school right. and work and he just let me enjoy being with just my son and yeah. so um uh, but i would fight all the time because i was bored to death you know like i just want to do something for myself i want to like open up my own business or something, something. And right, right, um, right. he would not allow me to do that. He told me that if I did that, that I was going out of God's order. So he's very religious. Ooh. Yeah. And he was so, playing, but he's he was playing. Yeah, he was, he was Bible thumping you over your head, he was, using, using the Bible the wrong way. He was 100% uh -huh. manipulating me using scripture yeah. in which, you know, I, I feared what I don't know, you know? And so, no, right, right, yeah. right, right. and so um, he would say, God's order, God first, then man, then woman, then child. And so whatever he says and does, I have to essentially just submit and obey to him. But I had a submitting problem. <laughs> like you're a puppy. <laughs> I had a submitting like you're a puppy. <laughs> you had, no, no, you had a self-esteem issue. Right? He was attacking your self-esteem. You didn't have a problem with so, Jenny. Yeah. But go ahead. Something, yeah, but, yeah. Certified I mean, in something. He's going to go pay for that, right? You're saying? Yeah, he, he paid for it. Which then I'm sitting oh, he here. Did? Yeah, okay. so I'm sitting here still wondering, like, is he a narcissist or am I sick? Or is it him? You still were thinking yeah, that. Yeah, all the way, to, even since we broke up, I struggled with it. Back and forth, back and forth. And I was like, even though I started treating him as if he was a pathological liar, because 
I knew for okay, a fact right. it was. Which is the right thing. That's the yeah. right thing to do. Yeah, um, freedom life. I That's what they are. I questioned myself because he would do these nice things for me. And like even when we broke up, he would send me <laughs> he would send me gifts to the house or like he would just be like, you know what, I just want to pay for dinner for you, Mason. So like he'll reserve us places at like luxury dining and then give us like a, a luxury hotel to stay the night in and this is really weird. So like I'm still being love bombed and gaslit. You were broken up. We, we were you were broken, broken up. up and he's, yeah. He's, he's like heavy love bombing. Oh, we have to ask, how do you deal with when you deal with the moments when you feel triggered and you have flashbacks or you have moments? You said something totally amazing in show prep uh, 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 last week sometime or a few days ago. And I have to tell you, it was beautiful. So me shut up, me shetty shetty, you go. How do you deal with it uh, when you have those, those moments? Uh, well, I, I recognize, number one, that I'm going through a trigger now. At first I didn't, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I, I literally just um, but continue to nerd out and educate myself. Um, I would um, talk to somebody. I would, um, I don't know, I, I, I would just confront them. I just confront them when I go through triggers. I recognize that they are the triggers. Um, you know, I try to keep myself busy, but I know that like, uh, if you just try to mask those things, you're never gonna be able to overcome them. So I literally just take them like head on. Like, yep, the trigger's about to come. I'm just, I, I call them waves. And that's what I call them. Waves? I do call them waves. That's what I found in it. Yeah. Okay. I call them waves. So sometimes I float. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> I, I drown. And then but sometimes wow. I surface, you know, and I'm freaking amazing. <laughs> <at it. laughs> sometimes you're on top of it. Okay. Yeah. Air high fives to get on there. That's cool. That's cool. So sometimes you, you feel like you drown in these moments of the past. Our memories. Um, yeah, I have to recognize that you, they were not real. I was going to say, how do you navigate through that? And that's how you do it. You recognize that they're not real. And how does that help you? Well, I guess just knowing that uh, he's a con artist and this is part of their their uh, sickness, I guess. And just uh, one thing that really, 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 really helps me the most is recognizing that they it's not that they don't want to miss me or that they don't love me it's that they actually literally cannot they cannot love you they cannot love you back they cannot love whether you it's back. male or female yes. he, no matter how much you pour into that yes they cannot love you back and i i it took me a long time to accept that because it looks and it feels like he did at one point but mm -hmm. really it's not love in the capacity that a normal person loves, a genuine love. So that's what helped me. It's like, you know, it's not that he doesn't want to miss me, it's that he can't. Or he, he can't love me. He cannot. You know, he cannot love anybody more than himself. You know, um, yeah. or, or love Thanks. in the way that even, you know, just a normal person loves. He can't. To, to get to, to get, you're saying that he was angelic when you first met him. Mm -hmm. What did he become next? You described him as wounded. Did I get that right? You said he seemed like he was wounded the next time you got together with him in 2013. Mm -hmm. And as we go down this little timeline, from 2008 he went from being angelic. 2013 he became like this wounded person. And then in 2018, when you guys connected again, and now you're going to date again, he's mysterious. Okay, he went from being angelic, wounded, to mysterious. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, he's going down, first of all. So he's still mysterious. Mm -hmm. But then I ask you this question. Everybody check this out. This is, this is really amazing. When we go back and kind of do a timeline and look at, at, at a narc and how they are in our life, they slowly try to move us to become like them is the main thing. Mm -hmm. And so he was angelic. He was wounded. He came across mysterious in 2018. Now you guys are dating in 2018. Mm -hmm. You broke up in February of 2020. In that time frame of 2018 to February of 2020, which right now you've totally no contact with him and moving on with your life. He went from 
from being this mysterious person in 2018 and in in quick succession he became you said evil confusing or tried to essentially make you confused and then i'm not gonna say the last word <laughs> hey. but let's just say he was a mule he was a donkey <laughs>